So, Lower Fifth, um, with the exercise this week, what we're going to do is we're going to practice some of the interpretation questions um, that you will face in your GCSE exam, um, focused on the topic of industrialization in Stalin's Russia. So it might be worth you just going back and revising this again. Um, on the Firefly page underneath this clip, you will find a little revision sheet um, that I put on there about industrialization, but it would make sense for you to go back and look at the notes that you've made on this important topic, industrialization and the five-year plans, and have a bit of a read through and check you understand it, particularly the potential achievements and failures of the five-year plans, so that this will make the work that you're about to do much easier. And there are three tasks I'm going to ask you to do here and send in to me for marking and feedback. Now, in your exam, you question one on Russia would be an inference question, which you've practiced. Um, question two would be an explain why question, which you've practiced. And question 3A would be a how useful are these two sources question, which again you've practiced recently. But what we're going to do today is concentrate on questions 3B, 3C and 3D. So, if you look at the screen in front of you, you can see that this is your typical 3B question, asking you for the main difference between two interpretations on the achievements of the five-year plans. Okay, so it's important to focus on the tail end of that question. These are interpretations about the achievements of the five-year plans. And all you have to do on this is quite simply identify each of the two different interpretations and present some evidence to support those. So this is where you might use one or two quotes from each interpretation to help you explain the main difference. So if you're looking at this, for example, if you're looking at interpretation one to start with, you would identify that this is talking about some of the problems um, and not the achievements of the five-year plans. And you might pick out a couple of quotes from this to evidence that, to support that. For example, it talks of, and I quote, whole branches of industry being held up for lack of essential supplies, and I quote, lack of cooperation, and again, poor standards. After you've done this, you then use that magic phrase, either on the other hand, or alternatively, and you move on to interpretation two. And on the other hand, interpretation two is talking of the successes, the achievements of the five-year plans. And again, you would provide some evidence to support this from interpretation two. So you might quote about the Soviet Union becoming the second largest industrial power in the world, about the new steel plants and about this happening all over the Soviet Union. So it's a nice clear question. It's quite straightforward. And again, realise that this is only four marks. You should not be spending more than five minutes on it. So please don't overindulge this question. We just want to know. Identify the interpretation in, in, the, first, in the first one. Give us a few quotes to support it. On the other hand, alternatively, move on to the different interpretation on the achievements in the five-year plans in interpretation two. Give us one or two quotes to support it. Pretty straightforward. Now, in front of you, you can see question 3C, and question 3C is asking you for one reason why these interpretations are different. Now, the usual answer here is to suggest that one of the reasons that these interpretations are different is that the historians have given weight to different sources. So usually you should be able to mix and match the interpretation to a source. So, for example, you will notice that interpretation two, which talks about the successes, the achievements of industrialization you can see that that historian has prioritised sources such as those in Source A, which show Magnitogorsk, this huge city that became, from nothing, an important centre for the iron and steel industry. So again, all you're doing is using the source to fit the interpretation, which provides evidence for why perhaps this source might be different, that the 
historians writing the interpretations have, used, have just used different sources, prioritised and given weight to different sources. You would then use a separating phrase, such as on the other hand, or alternatively. And on the other hand, the historian um, in interpretation one, who has discussed some of the problems and lack of achievements with the five-year plans, has probably prioritised or used sources such as those in source B. And again, you would quote evidence from source B to help that. Source B talks about disrupted supply, um, about workers accusing the husbands of locomotive drivers, um, stoppages and breakdowns, etc. So again, this is a short and simple answer here. You're only looking at four marks. You're only looking at five minutes spending on this. So don't overindulge again. Just simply state that one reason why the interpretations are different is because historians have used different sources, given weight to different sources, and then provide evidence for that by just showing how maybe interpretation one has prioritised the information in um, source B, a couple of quotes to support it, and then the same, on the other hand, the different opinion interpretation you've got in, from the historian in two is because they've used sources such as the one in A, and again, give some support for that from A. You know, A isn't a great photocopy, but you can picture the chimneys and the factories, and also you can see the, the motor vehicles in, in a great row coming out of the production lane there too. So keep it nice and simple. Which brings us on to question 3D, which is where I want you to spend most of your time because this is worth 20 marks, including spelling, punctuation and grammar. So it's important that you spend 30 minutes plus on this question in the exam and you do spend some time planning and thinking about what you're going to say before you get started. Now, it's important in this question to think about what your opinion is on the achievements of the five-year plans before you even look at the sources uh, and interpretations here. Um, for example, um, you might plan some evidence that you know from your own knowledge that supports the achievements and perhaps some evidence from your own knowledge that takes away from the achievements, perhaps points out some of the problems of the five-year plans. So in short on this question, the better answers are from students who actually have a viewpoint of their own regardless of what the interpretations say, and are confident enough to say it and to make that judgment and to back it up with things. So in this, what you're going to be doing is spending some good time, 30 minutes plus, being confident about your judgment and impressing with your own knowledge and quoting from the interpretations. And there is a particular structure that you should follow, a four paragraph structure which we have practiced before and looked at before in previous work. Now you can see that structure in front of you now. The question at the top, how far do you agree with interpretation two about the achievements of the five year plans? The first thing to do is to give your opinion. You've looked at interpretation two. What do you think? Is it right? Is it wrong? Give me your opinion. How do you feel about what Interpretation 2 is saying about this? And remember, Interpretation 2 is the one that's painting the pictures of, of this being very successful. You then move on to step two. You start by just reminding the examiner what the actual interpretation is, what the view of Interpretation 2 is. And then you use some evidence from the actual interpretation in the form of quotes to support that viewpoint. It's then when you go into your own knowledge, and again, is there anything in your own knowledge that supports the viewpoint contained in interpretation two that the five-year plans were did achieve, were successful? Once you finish that paragraph, you're on to step three, where you give the opposing view that is there in interpretation one, and you then use quotes and evidence from interpretation one to support that differing viewpoint that actually there were problems. Then you're into your own knowledge. What do you know in your own knowledge that can prove, can
can show that there weren't many achievements in the five-year plans? What can you use to support the interpretation in interpretation one? You're then into step four. And step four, your fourth paragraph, is your concluding paragraph where you pull it all together. And this is the paragraph that needs to be a bit developed. It needs to be a bit impressive. In step one, your introduction, you have previewed what your argument is and what your overall opinion is in answer to this question. So in step four, can we widen that out? Can we develop it more? Can we really impress with some own knowledge and, and your own thoughts and feelings and judgments about whether interpretation two is correct? Remember how far interpretation two is correct. It's very difficult to actually look at interpretation two and just say it's completely wrong. There are some things in there. There are some things in your own knowledge, presumably, that show that the five-year plans did see some significant achievements. So you want an overall substantiated judgment on this question. So there are four paragraphs here. One being a short one, step one. Step two, step three being roughly the same size and step four probably the same size of, as, as um, your paragraphs in two, three and four. So a good 30 minutes on this at least. Please think about it and plan it before you do it. And then follow the structure that you've been given here in front of you. And then send it to me. So I am after your answers for question 3B, question 3C and question 3D on this sheet. Um, there is a copy of the PowerPoint below on this Firefly page. There's also some information about industrialization too. And if you can do that for me, um, that would be fantastic by the end of this week. Please have a good go at this. This is the most difficult bit, I think, of the whole GCSE. And if you can get in a position by the end of it of being able to do this really well, then we are definitely looking at high grades um, this time next summer. Take care.